The topic of the forum tonight uh, is going to be multifaceted. I guess that's the best phrase. Because when I look up here at Pastor Ted Haggard and his wife Gail, my dad, Pastor Warren Beamer, uh, there's a lot of differences here. Uh, there's a lot of cultural differences. Uh, Pastor Ted is from Indiana. I just learned this morning Pastor Warren and my dad are both from the South, uh, like I am, but of course raised in different church cultures. Uh, and so there's a lot of differences represented here, uh, but there are also some very strong common denominators. Uh, and driving up here tonight, I thought a good place to start with every person represented up here would be uh, the most obvious common denominator, Dad, uh, Pastor Warren, Pastor Ted, Miss Gail, with all of you, is that you have all experienced uh, a great degree of loss in your life at one time uh, or another. I, I wanted to, first of all, ask you about your loss. Uh, you know, how did it affect you? What have you learned from it? Um, are you glad that you went through it? If you could go back and do it over again, uh, would it be done? You know, et cetera, et cetera. The greatest lessons I've learned in life is from loss, not from victory. I think a man becomes much wiser, much seasoned, um, and more well adapted to his current time after he's gone through the process. And many times that pruning of, and that process causes things to be lost, but purpose is always in operation. Purpose is always demanding effectiveness. And whatever God has to do or allows to happen to cause that purpose to come to complete fruition, then that's, that's good. And I will say, I think the common denominator among us all too was the loss we suffered was at the height of our successes. I know for Warren that is true. I know for you guys and, and, and for all of us, it wasn't like we were trying to get somewhere and then we lost it on the way. We had all arrived at what would be termed or deemed successful in ministry. And it was at the pinnacle that the loss occurred for all of us. Pastor Ted, Gail? Well, I, I think that's exactly right. I think um, loss, you know, we human beings, we evaluate loss, and losing influence, losing public respect, losing influ uh, influence or credibility, all those types of things. But economies go through loss. We call those recessions or depressions. And they are constructive for every economy because the people that are producing the least get laid off during a recession or a depression and they have to retrain so they become more productive. Mm -hmm. And so every economist, though nobody likes recessions, right. it always produces a more productive economy unless you pat it somehow. Mm -hmm. So the pain that we experience during loss, and let me answer your question, no, if we were gonna do it again, we <laughs> wouldn't do it again. <laughs> and scandals are very expensive and they're not worth it and they're painful. However, the Lord specializes in resurrection and the Lord can make some beautiful things out of some horrific things. So you wouldn't say I've been in a Siberian prison camp for 10 years and I had a visitation from the Lord so it was worth it. It'd be better not to go to the Siberian prison camp and just pray through and experience the Lord. And so, so, so just like just like people that go through a recession and learn to be more productive. I had to go to the desert all by myself. No staff, nobody knew where I was, nor did anybody care. They thought I was dead. They considered me dead. And I had to sort out the difference between what the Bible actually said and what my religious culture said. And I had to sort out what the spirit of the Lord's personality really was versus religious superstition. And so I sorted out in my charismatic world what was superstition, what was hocus pocus, what was soul power, and what was authentic Holy Spirit Christian life. Yeah. And that sorting, when you, and it, it can only happen thoroughly when you come to the end of yourself. And like Paul said, whether I am... Uh, in a place of plenty or totally abased, I can be okay. And once you learn that it's okay, I can be okay, I will survive this 
nothing worse can happen to me. It used to be, I would say, people thought so highly of me, when they would meet me, they'd be disappointed. Now they think so poorly of me, when they meet me, they're relieved. And, <laughs> and so I learned that in the yeah. desert, and that was all part of the lessons of loss. Well, I, th I think I would say that, that I am really grateful for, for what I gained. Because I think when we suffer loss, it gives us an opportunity to evaluate what's really valuable in our wow. lives. And I know when we went through our loss, I had to ask myself the question, Gail Haggard, who are you going to be in this story? Hmm. And I had to evaluate what's really valuable to me, what is important to me. And I knew my faith, I knew my marriage, what I believe about marriage, the dignity of my children, our church, friendship, the value I place on friendship. And once I settled that, these are my values. This is what I care about. I knew how to respond. But I had to discover that in myself. I had to be pushed to the place where I had to determine what is really important here. So for that reason, I think prior to the crisis that we faced, I thought our lives were, were wonderful in every way. I felt as though we were at a point in life where right. everything was working, everything was coming together beautifully. And I don't think that I could have learned the things that I've learned had I not been pressed into suffering the way I was mm. and having to evaluate yeah. my life and what oh. I really value. So for that reason, this side of that crisis, I am truly grateful. We awesome. are where we are and we've gone through what we've gone through. Incredible. What, I, Warren, do you have anything to say? Loss, um, when we talk about that place of loss and and where we're at and what it's made it. I, I think I'm a thousand times more uh, the man I'm supposed to be, minister I'm supposed to be, place I'm supposed to be after the loss that I've went through. Yeah. And I think I can truly, I think I can truly count it all joy from the loss that I've been mm. in the middle of because of what it made me. There's things I used to talk about in divorce or in different stuff like that when I talked to other people that were walking through things, and I was an idiot. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the slightest idea what I was talking about. Right. That now what comes out of my mouth is a different thing. It, it comes from the middle of my spirit. There, there's a relation that happens between me and other people immediately that allows me to be the healing that the Lord plans for me to be rather than me just to propagate it right. in some way. So the difference in me is, is night and day. Uh, and there really is a place to embrace it. And, and I can actually look, I can actually look and see that, that what I lost in so much, so many senses, I really didn't have anyway. Mm. See, this is There's brilliant. A wake up. That what you're saying is brilliant. It, it's, we were jokingly saying the other day, I wouldn't listen to anybody that hadn't suffered. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But here's the way I would, I would really say it, maybe a more complete thought. If lots of people suffer and lose because they get bitter, they become angry, they die, and it is easier to stay dead. It's harder to resurrect. Yeah. All right? And so, so to just get depressed, go on medication and die, that's an easy way out. Okay. But if you decide to resurrect, there is a depth of quality of insight of life and the world doesn't have a hook in you anymore. Yeah. Because then when you see worldliness, you identify it. When you see earthly things, you identify it. You know it's shallow. You know it's empty. You know those things. And when you've suffered and resurrected, there is a depth of quality mm. about your analysis of yeah. situations that you just don't get anywhere except And even greater except, than our common denominator of loss yeah. is the resurrection point. The resurrection. It, it's yeah. our greatest common, common denominator right here. Yeah, that's the point right. of resurrection that's happened in the middle of, of what's on the stage in, my, in mentality, in, in thought process, yeah. in realization of things, in future, in, in the reality of stuff. Sure. The resurrection there, there are loads is what of we're guys, really coming on here. Loads of guys lost that never got back up that right. aren't being interviewed today. Right. And they I, don't even know they're lost. And, and they don't know it. They're they haven't experienced loss. They're just still walking in the yeah. same things. 
and they don't have any resurrection or they don't realize they've got lost. Then see, it was huge for me. I had a lady say to me, I was saying, I'm out. I'm never having anything to do with it again. I'm going to do business and I'm going to live a good life. If I would have been a businessman before and gone through this, nobody would have cared. And da, 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 yeah. da, da. I was just whining. I love whining. I love that. <laughs> it's so delightful to me. And so, so I was whining and this person, this person looked at me and they said, resurrection is so strong in you, you have no choice. You're going to resurrect. Yeah. And as I was walking through the desert, praying in the spirit, meditating on the scripture, I realized I got to tell somebody. You, you, I got to resurrect. I got to get out of the I, desert. I spoke a message actually a couple of weeks ago on Easter. Uh, and the essence of the mess message was that, that, that you have to resurrect, like you're saying. Um, the thing is, and I asked this question in the Easter message uh, because the, the scripture says that Peter was, was wondering as he walked away from the tomb. Um, and he couldn't have been wondering how Jesus resurrected uh, because he saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead just a few weeks before. They had seen J Jesus raise a dead body as he's coming, uh, as, as the widow's coming out of Nain and, and the young man is dead there. And so resurrection is not a new thing for them but with all of you guys I see a lot of Jesus because uh, Lazarus I, I told the church should have been the first one at the tomb calling Jesus out uh, because Jesus had just been calling him and and, and that's what happened with you yeah. guys I, I, I look at everyone that, that you guys spent the time to restore heal pray for their family and then when 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 pastors a lot of times go through things then you got to get up all by yourself but you still have to do that and so I commend all of you. Can I dive a little deeper theologically? Let me, let me commend this lady first, yes. please. You, you are amazing. That, sincerely, because you, you suffered loss, Ted. You suffered loss. An enormous loss. But you didn't lose your wife. Or my children. Or your children. And that, to me, is just... Amazing. Gail, you are to be held as the... Okay, Jesus is the king of kings. You can be the queen of kings. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, you're you're listen, amazing. Gail's question, it's what every, every, every Christian should ask. What is my role going to be in this story? That's strong. Am I going to be the accuser? That Am I going to be the whiner and the blamer? Am I going to be the self-righteous? Am I going to be a healer? Am I going to be a justifier and a restorer? Strong. Am I going to be a... See, it's just... And Gail got loads of letters, thousands of letters from good Christian women saying, you need to divorce that man. These, these men are horrible. And I told her, I said, I'm going to be toxic the rest of our lives. So Gail, you do need to divorce me because you would be a hit on the, uh, on the Christian, we love Jesus but hate men circuit. Well, she proved it with and, Gary Busey on. And so, yeah, on Celebrity Wife Swap. And so, 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 so she, could have, she could have gone that route and sold millions of books and been a hit on right. the Christian TV True. in Jesus' wonderful but men are terrible line. Well, she could coin but, the phrase, Proverbs 31.10, her husband's heart can fully trust her. Yes. Yeah. Through That's everything. Right. Yeah. Well, well that, that was is the big part. Here was the big part, guys. When all, because all of us have a good foot we put forward, and all of us have a dark part we hope never surfaces in our lives. All right. It was in the scandal that Gail met, and even an exaggeration of my darkest part. And she said, I will not divorce wow. you. Wow. I wow. love Holy you. Wow. I'm going to stay with you. And I said, I said, you don't understand. We're going to be poor the rest of our life. At the best, we're going to be driving an old dumpy Chevy. And we're going to be living in somebody's garage apartment. And working at 7-Eleven for six bucks an hour. And she looked at me. And she, I said, no more vacations. No more first class. No more cruises. No more suits and dresses. This is going to be hard work from now on. We are the despised and rejected. And she looked at me and she said, that's fine with me. I'm your wife. That is amazing. Well, yeah. I, I really did feel that this was Christianity 101. And that's my response to that. Thank you. But honestly, it was my test. 
What do I really believe? This was my opportunity to do the things that I had been teaching to women for many, many years. And so, do I love my husband? I know I love my husband. Am I hurting? Yes, I'm hurting, but, but my husband was hurting also. And he was embarrassed, he was ashamed. I was watching what he was going through. I was seeing his, his desire to make it right, to repent, he was sincere. And I thought, what, what other response would I have as a believer? And so I would have done it as, as his wife because I love him and I know he's so much more than the trial that he was walking through. But I also knew as a believer that my response to him would be one of forgiveness yeah. and kindness and coming alongside him. And so for me, it was Christianity 101. And I think that would resonate in all of our hearts. It wasn't hard to know what to do mm -hmm. once I settled that that's who I am. Absolutely.